How's it going, everyone? We're about to embark on season 18 of the save in the year 1999. If you're new to this channel, this episode's a great place to start. We're taking over the Toronto Blue Jays, and it should be our toughest challenge yet. If you're interested in the settings I'm using, check out this video. Spoiler alert, hardest trade settings possible, plus some difficult house rules added on. So let's go get acclimated with our new franchise. Why the Blue Jays? First, the job had to be available, and I wanted to switch back to the American League. That narrows it to eight teams. Then I wanted to take over a team that hasn't won the World Series in this universe. That left the Mariners, Blue Jays, and Devil Rays. Then I wanted a team that's been after a World Series the longest. Mariners and Blue Jays both came into the league in 1977. I picked the Blue Jays as a tiebreaker because I haven't been in the AL East yet. Not a whole lot to show for ourselves. Not only are they without a World Series ring, they're without an AL pennant. They won the AL East in 1984 and 89, but were dispatched in the ALCS each time. After a nice run of competitive seasons, things went south for this team in the 90s. As a small market team, the inability of the Blue Jays to keep their stars has plagued them throughout this history. The Blue Jays have had stars like Tony Fernandez, Mo Vaughn, and Jay Buhner all move to bigger markets in free agency. And you can kind of see why. This team has the lowest budget in baseball. It's a small market with low fan loyalty and low fan interest. At least we have a little bit of money available for 1999. Developing minor league talent is going to be crucial though. For this season, trying to get a few popular players can help generate more fan interest so we can get our attendance and our revenue up. The good news is our owner isn't as crazy as the last one we had in Houston. We'll have full control to manage our expenses, and he wants to win. Doesn't look like he'll be too generous with the finances, though. Skydome is still a fairly new stadium. Nothing really special about it. It's slightly favorable to pitchers, both in batting average and home runs. So we should have a slight bias toward control pitchers and good eye batters, but not something we're going to build our whole team around. And here is the team. The season just ended. Some of these players are going to be free agents. The Yankees and Red Sox are both strong atop the division, but at least the expansion double razor below us. Looking at the position rankings, 77 games seems kind of generous. Shortstop is the only position where we're in the top half. Kevin Millar looks like a decent DH and will have a legit A starter in Hideo Nomo. And we've got Roy Halladay, who's just injured right now. Bullpen looks like our strength, sort of speak. We finished sixth in the AL in bullpen ERA. But overall, the team's stats and rankings suggest we're not awful, but we're pretty far from contending, too. The promising part of this is our top prospects. We've got two in the top 10 and another pair in the top 75. Our minor league affiliates look average, so maybe we don't have much depth. And our major league personnel don't have a great reputation. We're missing a bench coach and a first base coach to boot, so let's take a closer look there. Joe Kowalewski looks pretty boring. He signed for three more years and doesn't look like an immediate firing anyway. And he does have good relationships with the team, so I think he's a keeper for now. It stinks that his one poor relationship is with our most important player, though. This is our hitting coach. What a joke. This guy needs to be fired right now. And Matt Cole's our pitching coach, and yeah, no hesitation. I didn't think I was going to make any decisions, but you're fired. Get out of here. Hank Taylor, our third base coach, is decent enough. You can stay. Go coach my defense. Art Quirk, our scouting director, meh. The available replacement is a little bit better, but we need to ride this one out for a few years. He's got a couple years left on that deal before we upgrade. Here's our trainer. I'm not sure what to think about this one yet. He just has one year left on his deal, so I'll upgrade if there's a clear candidate out there. Here's our minor league personnel, and I see a lot of poor reputations out there, so it might be time to clean house here. Here's our individual pitching stats for 1998. Hideo Nomo led the staff with four war and led the team in strikeouts. And he looks like a legit ace. Nice bounce back season after suffering 22 losses in 1997. And the real good news here is I have Nomo for three more seasons. The bad news is he's 30 years old. I don't need to move him right now, but I should trade him when his value is still high. We have a steep drop off to our number two starter, Dave Malicki, but he's serviceable. Fun fact, Dave Malicki really is the brother of Doug Malicki, who was our starter on the Astros. His ratings are pretty similar too. 1999 is his last year under contract with the Jays, so he's someone I'll look to deal before the trade deadline. 
John Trisler doesn't look so hot. Poor control, resulting in 128 walks this season. He's also in the outspoken personality class. Not much to like here other than he's still cheap and he'll eat innings. Johan Lopez is interesting. Pretty low stamina for a starter, but he could be productive though, and he has some room for growth still. He's an unmotivated personality. Need to watch our team chemistry here. And here's Roy Halladay, our number one pick in 1995. He still looks promising, but maybe not a Hall of Famer. We need to get him healthy first. As a low movement ground ball pitcher, he's gonna give up a lot of singles, but he gave up a good amount of homers too last season. Still could be a really great anchor in the future in our starting rotation. Our closer looks promising too. His 1998 season wasn't great, but he didn't get that much luck. There's more upside here, and he only has a year of service time so far. Another core asset to build around. Joaquin Benoit should become another good reliever. He just got his first call up this past midseason. There's still a ways to go in his development, so maybe he gets a little bit more AAA time. I like that he's durable. Unfortunately, he's another unmotivated player. Jose Paniagua isn't going to carry us. We could do worse with a minimum salary. His 1998 season looked really unlucky. Hopefully we'll get a good season out of him. Here's another fun one. This could be a back of the rotation starter, but he might also have to be a long reliever. Kevin Lake had a 681 ERA, but it came with a 385 Babbitt. Maybe our defense needs work? Lake is yet another pitcher we have with a negative personality though. Jose Jimenez looks better than his overall rating, but nothing more than bullpen filler for us. The high movement and extreme ground ball combo is intriguing though. Here are our individual hitting stats for 1998. Rafael Furcal stands out. He led the way with five war from the shortstop position in his rookie year. Dan Wilson is our starting catcher. The good news is he generally nets at least two war per season. The really bad news is he makes four million per season. That's 17% of our budget. Be really nice to move this contract somewhere else. In addition to the savings that would generate, it would give Ramon Hernandez some more serious playing time behind the dish. He's got a pretty good bat for a catcher, but his defensive ability is pretty low, so maybe we partner him with a defensive specialist down the road? As it stands now, we don't have a first baseman going into the 99th season. Mike Lowe would likely take that spot if we had to. He'd offer good defense at first base, but that bat's just not going to play well enough there. Holbert Cabrera is our best option at second base with Luis Alisea leaving the team. Decent glove, but definitely not a bad I'd want in the lineup full time. Kevin Ory isn't a cornerstone, but might play an important role in 99. He plays great defense at third base, which can help keep our pitchers fresh. And he's the team captain, which is really important to maintain morale if the losses pile up. And we've already seen some of the negative personalities on this team. Behold the franchise, 21-year-old Rafael Fercal, our shortstop and prototypical leadoff man. On top of the five war he got his rookie season, he still has more room to grow. Absolutely a player we want to keep around. Maybe we can do an extension without selling the farm. This franchise has a history of losing its stars. Damon Smith will play a corner outfield position. He's in his arbitration years and merely a stopgap solution. Probably goes on the trade block mid-season or so. Kevin Witt's a similar type player who can also play first base. He's young, he's cheap, he's halfway decent, but not someone that we should be building around if we're contending. Kevin Millar's a nice bat. He slammed 32 homers this season. Fortunately, he can't play the field. We have him for three more years and a slightly team-friendly salary. He's not so cheap though or so young to where I'd call him a cornerstone player. So our overall chemistry looks good on this page, but the situation will get worse. Four of our players on the left side are headed to free agency, and four of the five players on the right I covered earlier and are staying. This puts extra importance on Kevin Ory and Kevin Millar. For a small payroll, our contract situation isn't too bad. Getting rid of Dan Wilson's money would be amazing. Nomo and Millar are expensive, but not overpaid, and everyone else is team controlled. So we can do a little business over the next few years, but it needs to be timed with when our top prospects are ready to go. And speaking of those prospects, we have the number two system in baseball, just behind the Minnesota Twins. All the other AL East teams are in the bottom 10, which is nice. Roy Oswalt is the number two prospect in baseball, but there's some danger here. Since being drafted third overall in 96, he hasn't pitched great in the low minors, and he missed the first half of 1998 with a back problem. We need to get him back on track. Tony Dermenziev, that's hard to say, 
very strange looking prospect. The former 24th round pick is now the number eight prospect in baseball and his ceiling looks really high, but he's a long way from it. He's already 24 years old. Fared well on all three minor league stops in 1998 though. Maybe he'll crack the big leagues in 99 if he keeps it up, but at the same time, there's no need to rush him. Luis Matos is the number 56 prospect in baseball. He doesn't really look like a starting center fielder though. Maybe he's a fourth outfielder that can play all three positions well? I really like Eric Almonte's profile though. Our second round pick from 96 comes in at number 75 prospect. I can certainly see him fitting in as Rafael Furcal's double play partner someday. He'd also work great hitting behind for a call if his bat fully develops. His 98 season was spent in rookie ball though, so long way to go. Rafael Soriano comes in at number 82. We got him in a deal with the Cubs before last season. He looks like a legit closer. Like El Monte, he's still in rookie ball. We need to give him some time. Maybe Scott Downs will be a setup man for Soriano someday. Another find in the 96 draft. This lefty should be strong against both righties and lefties. So there are your Blue Jays. This is a nice farm system, so my plan is likely to pour as many resources into it as possible. At the big league level, we have too many holes to compete, but perhaps we can get that fan interest up with some popular players and enough wins, and who knows what can happen. My next episode will come at the midpoint of the offseason, so that's it for today. So what do you think about this team? Anything you're looking forward to seeing with these Blue Jays? Any predictions for the season? How long do you think it'll take to win two World Series titles with this franchise? Please like and subscribe if you're excited for this next chapter of the save, and we'll see you next time.